Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and this is uh, a weird one, but it fits. It fits, absolutely fits. So this is uh, Spletto Del Gatto channel. It's a place I've kind of turned it into a TV and movie review channel, but it's not just like any TV or movie. I'm like, I don't do reviews of Velvet Buzzsaw or Game Over Man. You know, I, I basically do comic booky stuff or comic book or sci-fi type of stuff you know what they used to call geek culture before that term was absolutely destroyed uh but uh i saw a movie tonight that was completely unexpected in almost every single way it was cold pursuit with liam neeson and it was just seen uh, uh, you know, with um, the the simplest of ex expectations, I saw the trailer. The trailer is a very straightforward, one might say, generic. It's Liam Neeson. You've seen movies where he kills people who killed his family. Somebody killed his family. He's gonna kill the people who killed his family, and it's in snow. And like in snow, and something to do with the plow was the big twist. I thought it was going to be like an 87 minute movie about literally him running over people's snow plows and maybe the sheriff's trying to figure out who, who who's running over people with snow plows maybe it's the guy whose job is to plow snow hmm, nobody knows oh my gosh it was <laughs> almost nothing like that so what this was is i kept thinking about this weird phase of movies that happened in the mid 90s and it continued for about i don't know eight till till the end of the 90s you still saw trickles of it in the early 2000s and every once in a while basically it was tarantino ripoff movies so tarantino's big shtick if you know you weren't there when he came around is that he was uh he was like a he worked at a video store so he watched like every movie ever made on video and he had an encyclopedic knowledge of movies and he kind of loved everything. He liked Oscar winners, he liked trash, he liked everything in between. He, he loved pop culture and, and he would kind of meld everything together. Now one of the big hits against Tarantino is that you know they'll bring up oh he uh you know he just copied the plot of city of fire oh he he copied this scene pretty much you know shot for shot he did this he did that uh, you know he's not really original but he is he's very very distinct and yes he was influenced by Ringo Lamb and John Woo and Martin Scorsese and Brian De Palma and Choi Hark is that how you say it but Tarantino is very oh and you know he was helped by what's his name who uh, wrote Killing Zoe that guy helped write Pulp Fiction but the thing is he's had what 10 15 movies right now and you know he's very distinctly himself all the time now the thing was he was basically a second generation you know he took all of these other directors and then he became his own thing and then there was this third generation that came like literally like the next year after him. But it wasn't really like a fully formed generation, obviously, because it was just a year. What it was was just plagiarism. It was a plagiarism of plots, and but it was major, mainly a plagiarism of style. Whereas it should have been this new thing. It should have been this, you know... Uh, generation and it wouldn't have been two years it would have been like 20 years later that you know grew up on tarantino and early robert rodriguez who also was big back then i all kind of fell by the wayside <laughs> well christopher mcquarrie but you know he had the way of the gun um and it should have been like now or like five years ago you know 20 years after Taren you know, reservoir dogs it should have been this new generation that was influenced but not copying and not plagiarizing and that's basically what this was so what cold pursuit is is it's absolutely not like i mean it is a revenge picture technically but it isn't it's basically gotham city colorado it's a comic book and 
it took me a little while because this is a very, very original. Like it starts off and you meet the guy and he's got his family and his son gets killed and you're like, okay, so now it's going to turn into every other Liam Neeson movie. And what it becomes is this absolutely insane uh, uh, movie about uh, uh, Colorado crime family, families killing each other and uh, also worrying about their son's diet at school and bullies and um, using political correctness to make a, a concierge nervous so you get free tickets to the ski lift. It's freaking insane. It is one of the most inventive, fun, funny, weird movies I've seen in decades. Uh, you know, things are pretty... Things have gotten kind of weird. One of the weirdest things is there was this, you know, period where, you know, you got more and more choice in things. And now there's actually less choice. Like, I get really frustrated. You know, I'll, I'll say like, oh, I want to go see Underworld, Blood, whatever, wh whatever the last Underworld movie was. And I, there's no blockbuster. My only choice is to, like, buy it for, you know, HD for... $14.99 or SD, <laughs> you can get it low resolution for $12.99. Like, uh, th this is kind of a, a little off my subject, but you used to have like multiple options to watch movies, multiple styles of movies, and you know, now things are pretty homogenous. Um, and you don't get like that weird, cool, funny, quirky, and not quirky in like a trying too hard, like, there was a couple jokes here that um, just didn't work for me. It's what I call white people humor. It's when the camera is just fixed and it's a flat angle and the joke is coming from like awkward silence. I, I don't like that. But there was a lot of jokes are like, the thing is like it starts off as a typical revenge movie and it gets crazier and crazier as like at, at the end, like one of the last shots is a vi very minor character who you saw 20 minutes earlier doing paragliding he appears out of nowhere and basically falls into a wood chipper-esque machine and then you just kind of go oh <laughs> he like you laugh like you go oh, okay that fits in this insane movie but it starts off like it's just like a typical revenge movie and you know the son gets killed and uh, uh liam neeson is about to uh, kill himself so he puts a hunting rifle puts a barrel in his mouth and then someone catches him and they're like, oh, hey, what's up? And he starts talking and the barrel is still in his mouth. He's like, bruh, bruh. and then he takes his mouth off the barrel and it makes like this comedy sound effect um, where the thing is Liam Neeson is acting as if this is a straight revenge movie that he has done 10 times over the last 10 years. And what it is, is it's, is it's like this weird lost generation of kids who grew up on Tarantino and then I look up the freaking director and he's like 64 years old <laughs> like this was not an older man's movie I mean it was very it felt kind of very youthful and fun and weird so yeah so um he's got a son who was killed because of a drug deal gone wrong or you know stealing from a drug dealer except for you don't find out his son was actually involved because like there's like this son has like three lines he shows up and he's like, um, hey, can I borrow the car? And they're like, yeah. And then he gets spoilers, kidnapped, and then OD'd on purpose. And then he's posed in a, a little park. And then they leave him there. <laughs> and it's just weird. Like, So you think, so there's like four guys in a van who uh, kidnap him and, and you know, overdose him on heroin. And so you think like the whole movie is going to be tracking down those four guys. But Liam Neeson finds, like, one of the guys, like, in the next scene, and it's, you think it's going to get long, drawn out, like, this guy's going to be some mastermind, and, you know, but he just starts, like, um, mouthing off to Liam Neeson, and then Liam Neeson basically just punches his face in, and then uh, they show, he takes him to a, a cliff with a waterfall, and he just tosses him over, and so you're like, is this movie over? 12 minutes into it and then they start introducing this uh this uh, crime boss and his son and his ex-wife and all the members of his gang and then there's another gang um uh and 
it's just great. I, I know this is kind of a babbling, random, rambling, but what I'm seeing is go see it. Like, um, uh, it came out like two weeks ago. There's actually a good amount of people in the theater. Um, I, I don't know, maybe the word of mouth. There's really not much out right now. It's one of those things like, hey, let's go see the movies. And then you see what the movies are. You go, oh, uh, I guess I'll see this Liam Neeson thing. I'm telling you, the the trailers are so deceptive to almost like be something that you could do a class action lawsuit over. Like uh, it's like the fire festival. It's like I was sold a completely generic, you know, paint by numbers, Liam Neeson revenge flick. And oh my gosh. And the thing is, it's not just like this. It's hard to explain. It's not just like some smart alecky film student. I'm going to subvert expectations. Like there's some deep cuts in there like, like there's at one point that there's a very distraught mother and she's like i don't know kind of like having a breakdown and she goes she's like did you know our son had a facebook did you know what his favorite band is he wrote it down and the dad just doesn't know she's like what did you talk about on all your hunting trips he's like hunting um, and you could see like this probably really wasn't the best marriage and he probably wasn't the best dad or the best um, uh, what do you call it uh, uh, husband and at, num- at one point um, another character's son is killed and even though he's just got, like the second gang that's being dealt with he kind of has more human reaction like uh, it almost felt like a uh, like a deconstruction of the you know revenge film well, we're going to show that you know the the main character didn't really care about his family that much but show actual grief there's these two crime bosses and you know they're dirtbags but they show more actual um care for their family there's even like this movie is crazy the guy's brother was in the mob and he's got like this uh, uh asian wife who's always berating him. And at one point it's obvious that, uh, it's a very complicated story. The main character's brother, uh, is getting, you know, kidnapped. And then the wife sees it and she's been yelling at him the whole time. And it seems like she kind of hates him. But then when she sees that he's being basically taken away for his death, there's this real subtle acting where she just puts her hand on the glass and you can tell she's like, Oh, he's, I'm never going to see him again. And she's heartbroken. I, 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 I didn't expect that. I didn't, I didn't expect basically every single part of this movie, and it was fantastic. Yes, there is a part where he drives up snowplow and he wrecks through someone's car, but it's like it's such a small part. It, it almost felt like it almost felt like they shot it just to put it in the trailer because they're like, we can't, you know. I just explained this movie in a babbling, rambling incoherent way and it took me 13 minutes there's no way you can encapsulate this oh it's uh it's got like a coen brothers feel to it but again not really it's really its own thing and i thought it was fantastic so uh oh my battery's kind of dying one other thing that i started realizing is there's a character that i kept saying this guy's kind of like the joker he kind of reminds me of a joker style character and uh it's basically the joker if the joker was never you know you know, got a white face, but uh, if you see it, tell me the character who you think is the Joker, because by the end, I was just, I, I couldn't, everyone has like a weird, you know, code name, so by the end of it, I was just like, oh, the Joker, that's the Joker, He's, he would be a really great Joker, he basically was the Joker, um, but like a Joker who has a kid, and is really worried about, you know, the kid's nutrition, it sounds like I'm making up all of this, like I actually didn't see it, and I'm just lying, Go see it. Go see it. It's good. It's really, really good. Go see uh, Cold Pursuit with Liam Neeson and a bunch of uh, people you never heard of before. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Bye.